Hi, welcome everyone. My name is Liz and Dwight, and I am here to do another Art in Isolation workshop with you. These workshops are sponsored by the Hoboken Public Library, and a major thank you for them allowing us to have these. This tonight is the third in a series of artists that we've been looking at in May to celebrate Asian and Asian Pacific Islander History Month. We have been focusing on Asian American artists. Tonight, we will be looking at the artwork of Roger Shimamura. Roger Shimamura was a pop artist. He was of Japanese ancestry, born in Seattle, Washington. He was born in 1939. He became quite a famous American artist. Um, in his early childhood, unfortunately, he was incarcerated in a concentration camp in Idaho with his family because of his Japanese ancestry. He spent two years in this concentration camp, but he was quite young and his memories of that period of time are not that distinct. However, when they moved back to Washington, he did suffer quite a bit from discrimination, racial dis discrimination for being Japanese. And that discrimination remained with him and influenced his work. His father, who was a pharmacist, had high hopes for Roger to become a doctor, but Roger was really unhappy um, with that career pursuit. He wanted to follow in the footsteps of his three uncles who were all illustrators and graphic artists. From high school, he went to art school where he did study commercial design and printmaking. Uh, early on in his studies, he became very much influenced by a group of California uh, Asian ceramic artists, and he thought that that was the avenue he was going to follow. But in his art studies in college, he fell in love with painting. He did uh, get an MFA in art, and after he graduated from university, he went on to become a professor of art at the University of Kansas, where he remained for 35 years. He is now retired and uh, living back on the west coast of the United States. His artwork, as I mentioned previously, became quite famous. He has pieces that are part of the collection at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Whitney Museum of American Art, the Smithsonian uh, Museum of, well, there are several uh, pieces in different Smithsonian museums in Washington, D.C. Roger was greatly influenced by a movement in art called pop art. You're probably familiar with artists like Andy Warhol, Roy Lichtenstein. These were pop artists. And he fell in love with their commercial imagery. He liked the flatness of the work. He liked the bright colors of the work. And you often see in Shimamura's work this influence because he used a lot of American iconography, like Coke bottles or Disney characters or cartoons. He loved his American heritage, but he also venerated his Japanese ancestry. He would frequently combine Japanese um, images with these pop art American commercial images that he also loved greatly. And he liked the juxtaposition, juxtaposition of the traditional Japanese art with the American commercial pop art imagery. So first we're going to look at one of his paintings. This is a self-portrait by Roger Shimomura. You can see that he has this very famous reference to American cartoons, the supermarket, Superman 
logo on his t-shirt and he's fashioning himself as not just an American superhero but a Japanese American superhero because he is wearing a Japanese kimono on top of his Superman costume. You can tell that this is pop art because there are a few things about this work of art that are very um, popular with the pop art iconography. You'll see that the image is quite flat. The colors are very bright. There is black outlining and then there are lines that are fairly typical of lines that you would see in either commercial art or cartooning. I really love this painting because not only is it addressing the serious issue of racism in America, but it also has a lighter quality to it, kind of a, a funny uh, message to it where he's combining this superhero imagery with his Japanese traditional heritage. All right. So in honor of Shimamura and this kind of pop art painting that he did frequently, we today are going to be doing our own self-portraits. We're not going to be creating a realistic self-portrait, but we're going to make more of a kind of a um, caricature of ourselves, more in the style of pop art. Very flat, very commercial, very graphic, very much like a cartoon, not like a traditional realistic self-portrait. Before we begin creating our portrait, I want to do a quick review of the color wheel. For those of you who have not seen previous lessons, this will be new to you. For those of you who've been part of my many lessons over the years or through isolation, uh, art in isolation, you'll be familiar with the color wheel. But here we go, just a review. There are three primary colors, blue, red, yellow. When you mix the primaries, they create what we call secondary colors. Yellow with blue makes green. Red with blue makes violet. Red with yellow, orange. We are going to be using acrylics tonight, so knowing the color wheel and how to mix colors will be very helpful to you in this lesson. A review, another review, on color mixing. I've set up my palette with the three primary colors. I hope you can see red, yellow, blue. I also put it white and black, and we're going to talk about how to make your colors lighter and darker in hue as well. All right, this is acrylic paint. Up until now in our lessons, we've been primarily using watercolor paint. Acrylic paint is a whole nother animal because acrylic paint is a thicker paint. You can mix it with water. It is water-based like watercolor paint, but you can use it in ways that are completely different from the thinner watercolor paint that we used. First of all, red. Let me get a bit of paper towel. Remember, for those of you who've never used acrylic or watercolor paint, remember to wash your brush and wipe it when you're mixing. Red with yellow. Red with yellow makes orange. Red 
red and blue make violet. And our final secondary color is yellow. with blue. And yellow with blue makes green. So that is your basic color technique. And in a moment we're going to start using these paints to create our image. Because we're doing a self-portrait, you're going to want to work in front of, if you're lucky enough to have a large mirror hanging on a wall, use that or use a small hand mirror. You always want to be able to look at whatever it is you're drawing and painting. Don't do it from memory. Too hard. Always have what you're drawing in front of you. Remember though that today we're doing a caricature. We're not going to try and shoot for a super realistic picture. We're looking for something pop art, commercial, and fun. So, if you remember from lessons past, or if you're a new student tonight, the human face is an oval. Notice I made a mistake. It's okay. We're going to paint over these pencil lines, so any errors that you make, you can cover up. Now I'm going to look at the most important parts of my face, which are the features. And certain parts of my face I'm going to exaggerate because this is a caricature. I'm shooting for something, again, that has kind of a cartoony feel to it. Put in my eyebrows, my rather large nose, and I'm going to exaggerate the size of my nose to keep the cartoony feel. My eyeglasses, and I'm also going to make them a little larger than real life. bit of my eyes, showing through the lenses of my glasses, lips, hair, enough. That's enough for us to begin. And here we go. I'm going to create a flesh tone. That's my flesh tone. Obviously skin color is all different colors, but now I'm trying to recreate my own. I'm pretty light skin Caucasian. So white. White is the color that you need in order to lighten the tint of the colors that you're creating. I'm going to start with the secondary color orange. You're probably thinking, yikes, orange. How is that going to work? And I'm going to mix the orange with a bit of blue. 
orange and blue are opposite each other on the color wheel, they are complementary colors. When you mix them together, they create a neutral shade, something more in a brown family. And every human being on Earth, even with different colored skins, is a different shade of brown. So here we have our orange. And I'm going to mix it with a little bit of its complementary opposite blue. Why? Because it's going to make it some shade of brown. That feels like a little bit too much blue. So I'm going to wash the excess off. It's a little bit too green now. So now I'm going to take a bit of red to kill that green. Why red? If you look again at the color wheel, red is opposite green on the color wheel. They are complementary colors. Whenever you mix complementary colors together, you neutralize them and get to a brown earth tone. All right, so this brownish color is way too dark for my skin tone. So I'm not going to put white into the brown. What I'm doing is putting the brown into the white. It's much easier to add more color to the white and make it gradually darker than it is to try and add white to the dark color. You'll use up all your white paint that way. Much better to take the color and add it to the white a little bit at a time as you go. All right. So I have a pretty pale Caucasian color now, and I'm working in the larger shapes of the face. Remember, in pop art, the imagery should be flat and not three-dimensional, so you don't have to worry about shading or making the face look three-dimensional. I'm doing the skin tone first because it's the largest part of my painting. Do your big shapes and your background first. Now you'll notice at this point the paint is relatively thin. That's okay. The beauty of acrylics is you can work them up from the thin layers by adding more paint as you go. Bold. Be courageous when you're mixing your colors. It really is a lot of fun, color mixing. It's really kind of like doing a scientific experiment. Keep trying different colors together and see what you can create. Nose. Skin around the eyes. Notice at this point I'm being pretty free and messy with the way I lay the paint on. That's something else you can change as you go too. Each layer of acrylic paint you put on you can make smoother as you go.
Here we go with the background. I'm going to keep it pretty dark. I think uh, Roger Shimamura liked a dark background because dark backgrounds can really emphasize what you want the viewer to focus on. And in this particular painting, the face is the most important part. nice to work on the large shapes first because it helps you to loosen up. You don't have to be neat, careful, and precise when you fill in the large space of the background. At the moment, my background isn't flat and smooth, nor is it a, a solid color, the way a pop artist would do. But as the paint dries, you can add more layers and make it smoother as you go. But in the interest of time, I'm just going to work really quickly to fill in as much as I can. Now you can go back and work on the smaller shapes, the features of the face, and have fun. I'm going to outline my glasses first. Because they're going to be a major part of this painting. If you've never done portraits before, this kind of caricature work is a great starting point. You know that you don't want it to be realistic, so it gives you more freedom, and it also helps you look at the parts of the face so that when you want to do more realistic portraiture, you have the experience of observing what the face looks like. Again, I'm exaggerating the size of the eyeglasses because that's what makes it more like pop art and caricature. So pop art was a movement where artists started looking at everyday objects and commercial design and elevating it to the status of fine art. You're probably, many of you, familiar with Andy Warhol's famous Campbell Soup paintings. They are a really good example of pop art and the types of imagery that pop artists created. So there go my eyebrows, a little redder than I wanted. So I'm adding a little green to make it touch more brown. Let's add a little black to it too. Ah, yeah, that's the color I was shooting for. Notice how I always mix my colors on the palette. Don't try and mix on the painting itself. It's much more difficult to cover up a mistake on the painting than it is to keep experimenting with the colors on your palette and changing them on the palette. Okay, fill in the hair.
One thing about acrylics that you will learn, they dry out pretty fast. You can get gel mediums. If you fall in love with acrylic paint, you want to invest in gel medium because you can get mediums that thin down your paint, that make the paint not dry out as quickly and make it last longer. All right, so I think you're getting a feel for what a pop art self-portrait might look like. Obviously, I haven't finished. But this is a good starting point for you. Do remember, as the paint dries, you can go back and smooth it out to make it more in the pop art style. Or if you like this textural effect, you could leave it that way too. So I hope you enjoyed learning about Roger Shimomura. Do look him up. Do Google his art images and learn more about him. He is really one of the greater artists that we have in America today and he's worth learning more about. In closing, I want to remind everyone that you can see more of these lessons at hobokenlibrary.org.